Go around there, open fire and flank them from the right, okay? Craig? Yeah. Hagman! And you see Steve is wearing uh, the regimental cap, which is made of uh, a felt, which is pressed and glued with a, a leather peak. Um, they were issued with one of these every year on New, New Year's Day. Uh, what can I say about them? Extremely vulnerable to the weather. This may have looked like... Uh, this shape, perhaps on the day it was, on the day that it was issued, but I swear that after three months on campaign, it wouldn't have looked anything like that at all. It would have bent, it would have got wet, it would be all screwed up, it would look quite different. Um, we have here the cockade, the leather cockade with a regimental button in there, and the plume that indicates, the green plume that indicates this is a light unit or a rifle unit, and the bugle badge of the rifles and the light infantry, taken from the hunting horn that was popular in the day. So moving down, you can see we've got the green tunic, um, the first green tunic to be used by an entire battalion in the British Army. The red, the bright red facings, as it's called, which you'll find on our collars and on our uh, sleeves, they designate that this is a royal regiment. There was a, a kind of rule about blue facings with red coats equals royal regiment. Any other colour jacket and you'd have a red facing. So the red facing reflects the fact this is the Royal American Regiment and that's why it's red. Um, this jacket about 1805, 1806 is introduced with the three, there's, it actually has 44 buttons in entirety um, but you can see there are three lines of buttons quite decorative, quite smart, really important to soldiers then and now. Moving down, um, you'll see that Steve is wearing blue pantaloons, as they're known, a, a tight-fitting uh, kind of trouser that's, that's designed to be quite tight to the leg, and he's wearing these quite unique half-length gaiters um, that uh, you won't find in many other British regiments. Most other British regiments have either got a short gaiter or the full long gaiter up to the knee. But this was a, a unique gaiter for the 60th that seems to, uh, uh, you don't seem to find it on anybody else. And I suspect it has to do with their continental origins. And the red, the, the, blue, the blue and the red stripes again reflect the 60th's other battalions, the red-coated battalions from the mid 18th century and it again reflects the fact they're a royal regiment the royal blue and the red looking at the leather work you can see the black cross belt here and steve if you can just move around for me please you'll see that it's attached to cartridge belt and the cartridge belt is a block that's what you'd fill up with um, a number of paper rounds you'd carry 60 uh, black powder rounds in in there plus the equipment for adjusting and fixing the rifle a powder horn was actually used as a magazine for carrying extra powder um, and is quite useful if you get any kind of misfire as well. Steve, you can turn back around. The so-called ball bag, which is uh, intended to carry about 30 extra rifle balls. A brush and pricker, this is used for cleaning the frizzing pan and the touch hole of the rifle to keep them clean in, in operations. Um, here we have the sword bayonet. The rifle is shorter than the average Shellville musket, therefore requires a much longer bayonet um, in order to give the rifleman an equal chance in that kind of engagement. So you can see it's a terrifying looking weapon. You can't be a marksman and fire, one, uh, and fire the rifle with one of those on, so a lot of the rifle's traditions require that the, the sword, as it's known, is not fitted. And, um, and indeed it wasn't. In fact, very frequently used for cutting wood uh, and not so frequently used for bayonet charges. But there are records of them being used either in that bayonet mode or in the sword mode, and very terrifying that must have been. These are shoes as they were made at the time. On a straight last, it means they fit either foot. These are completely interchangeable. Uh, it spreads out the wear, uh, it's also cheaper, and I have to say they're amongst the most comfortable shoes I've ever, ever worn. Uh, the white strap here leads to the so-called haversack, 
which is where a man would keep a day's rations. What Steve isn't wearing, because we're on a training day today, is his pack and his water bottle uh, and some other accoutrements. All in all, if he was fully equipped in full order, which was really the only order they had in those days, he could be carrying between 70 and 80 pounds of equipment, which, which takes us back to the most basic bit of kit, which is the Baker rifle. Uh, introduced uh, by Ezekiel Baker, Baker following a competition for uh, different designers to produce the best piece of uh, rifle equipment for the British Army. This was good in the terms that it was cheap enough, but it was effective enough to become the first British infantry rifle. Um, it had seven grooves that achieved a quarter turn over the length of the barrel. It's a .62 calibre. Uh, the lock is pretty much the same, only smaller than, as you'd find on uh, any flint lock, uh, such as the brown bess. So how does it work? Well, we put some black powder into the frizzing pan. Shut the actual hammer there. This is called the cock. And in there you can see a flint. In loading it, I'd have put a, a, a charge of black powder down the barrel with a ball and, and the paper to wad it. We then ram. Ram that in. Steve, if you can go to full cock. And spark. Now you should have seen some sparking there. That ignites that black powder charge, flashes through the touch hole, ignites the main charge in the barrel, and bang, off she goes. Allegedly effective range up to 500 yards in the hands of a marksman probably on the grounds that these riflemen practiced every single day of their lives uh, to fire well. Probably two to three hundred yards maximum. Really good marksmen, really good ones with the right powder and the right weather. Perhaps 500 yards, it has been claimed. Thomas Plunkett. Perhaps. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs>